Hello, and welcome to the Randy Steffes Show. And uh, step number one, thank the cameraman, Johnny Arkansas. Yeah, back for part two, brother. Now, this is going to be like part four or five of the Kramer neck restoration, and this one is going to be more, more filing, more filing, more filing, more filing. We're going to show all the filing. This is the file that we're using. Do you file the other side any different than you file the, the no, other side? No, we're doing the exact same thing. All right. We did the base side. We're going to go do the treble side of the neck now. Same process exactly. My little Japanese file. And we're filing away at the fret sprout. We're getting rid of this here fret sprout. Fret sprout. That's what they call it, fret sprout. It's almost as bad as Brussels sprouts. So yeah, I'm just that's making, what you, that, making it smooth. That's mm. what you call like a little nephew or something that's out of line. Yeah. Fret sprout. Yeah. Hey. That's the new guy in the guitar repair shop. Hey, fret sprout. Yeah. Hey, fret sprout. Can you get me a? <laughs> Give me a coffee, extra cream. Yeah. Can you give me a coffee and a pastrami sandwich? You worked in a uh, guitar shop, Randy? I worked in a guitar shop in Berkeley, California for a couple of years when I lived in I lived in Oakland and I worked in a guitar shop in Berkeley, California where I learned a lot of this stuff from a amazing guy named Fat Dog. Oh, tell us about the Fat Dog. Fat Dog, Subway Guitars, Berkeley, California. This episode sponsored by <laughs> Subway Dog Guitars and Fat and Dog. Subway Guitars, yeah. buddy. Actually, I got a lot of practice doing like the fret polishing that's going to come after this cuz like Fat Dog, he would do that fret work we were talking about, you know, the leveling part. And then he'd be like, "Hey, crown and polish these." Be like crown and polishing fat dog's work. You would say you steal he did, uh, he did some the, of his technique. He did the important stuff, and then I did the, the more easy stuff. Oh, you're like, like fat dog's apprentice. He's a super skilled luthier, you know. Like he knows so much, learns so much from that guy. How would you relate it to like a cartoon? You and fat dog. Fat dog would be. Uh, Fat dog is like <laughs> foghorn leghorn. Okay. <laughs> Fat dog has like an endless collection of machines that make fart sounds. Wow. That Fat dog's dog. fucking amazing. Fat dog can work super fast just because he's got this like amazingly practiced hand like Maybe I've worked on thousands of guitars. He's worked on like hundreds of thousands of guitars. Unbelievable. Huge amount of guitar work. He is not afraid to get physical with his work. Well, would you say Fat Dog's philosophy is if you can fix anything, then you don't care like what you break when you're tearing it apart? Well, he knows he can fix everything, and he also knows, like, when you start this, it's a can of worms. You you, you don't know how deep it's going to go, you know? Like remodeling a, a house or something? Yeah, it's exactly like remodeling a house. It's like, you know, as soon as you pull some old part apart, something yeah, else is going to happen. Yeah, something else is going to fall down. Yeah, well, you know what that happens? It seems to be happening with uh, brand new guitars, too. You know? It happens with your I, very brand new guitar. I think just guitars break and you got to maintain them. Would you say keep that as a rule, Randy? They, they, they take maintenance. That's the point. Guitar maintenance. That's the whole thing that I'm doing here. I'm maintaining my guitars. I'm trying to make them play great. <laughs> But this is a level of maintenance that is. Uh, this is some next level. Like, next level maintenance. Yeah, like getting rid of this fret sprout is a little bit next level. 
It's still pretty basic. Say it again. Though. What is it called? Fret Sprout. Fret Sprout. That's what Fred people Sprout. call it. Fret Sprout. Fret Sprout. Fret Sprout. Anybody seen ends. Fret Sprout? Oh, he ground it. He he grinded off somewhere. He's a grindcore musician now. Fred Sprout. Fred Sprout, the grindcore musician. in my way and that's just regular masking tape right from your local hardware store bought it just down the street at my local hardware store supported local business today and off camera ladies and gentlemen I learned you don't want to do this necessarily with a maple neck this is sort of if you have a darker wood you want to start grinding on it the rosewood's a little more forgiving than that maple fretboard Stratocaster or Telecaster that's what Randy says a little bit more <laughs> then forgiving. this file would be going on actual finish like I unfinished think all wood these. And everything. I think all these videos should have a disclaimer. Do not. Do not attempt. Do not try this. Am I recommending you do this? No. I'm just taking you on my journey yeah. as I do this. Do not try this to your guitar. Do I recommend that you do your own work? No. Take it to a pro. Pay him money. Get it done right. I kind of want to take it to Fat Dog. <laughs> yeah, man. You could send your guitar to Fat Dog. I bet you, like, for some repairs actually and what you have to pay to run a shop in new york city it might be cheaper to send it for me to send it all the way to berkeley california <laughs> pay that shipping because fat dog fat dog is definitely doesn't charge what he's worth he's got a very uh, he's got a very utilitarian viewpoint on what you should charge Actually, when I was working there, you're like I was kind of pissed off sometimes. I put a lot of hours into a guitar, and he'd be like, "Yeah, that's I charge fifteen dollars for a setup," and I was like, "Yeah, but like this setup took like four hours, man." Some setups, Fat Dog, man. Like I watched Fat Dog one time. Like he charges very little in labor to cut a new nut for your guitar. I mean, a new bone nut for your acoustic guitar. He didn't charge. 10 bucks or something for that fee you know there's people in this town charge you a fucking a lot more than 10 bucks plus the cost of a bit of bone to cut you a new nut and he's like you know like it shouldn't take you any longer than this to do it and like fat dog cuts the nut for the guitar he'd like grab a blank he'd like just kind of pull the old one out trace it go straight to the bandsaw cut it almost perfect right from there to shape get out his files, slot it, slot it all by eye, no gauges, no measuring, no nothing, just eyeball, slot it, do it perfectly, and it would take him like from start to finish like 10 minutes max, you know, like nothing. It takes me like substantially longer if I want to cut a nut. When I cut nuts in that shop and did it more regularly, it take me an hour to do a decent job. Think, at least an hour. Fat dog would be like, I'm just, you know, if you want to make more money, you know, do it in 10 minutes, not an hour. <laughs> Get paid by the job around here. All guitar shops. You would, by the job. you would say a uh, fat dog was a hard man. No, he's a, he's a dream boat. <laughs> do it in everything. 10 minutes. You know, he just had standards for his shop. Yeah. Know, we charge very little money to do work. That dog would hire some people. I don't think we'd get jobs in other places. He's a very soft-hearted man. Teach them this valuable skill and exploit them with it. <laughs> <laughs> Make them slave away in the back of Subway guitar. I love my time at Subway Guitars. If I still lived in the Bay Area, I'd probably still be working there. I didn't stop working there for any other reason other than I moved to fucking New York. 
Man, the way you're explaining this, it makes it sound like some weird place where all of the guitar guys hang out. Is that really what it was? Yeah. It's Just totally, tell the truth. It's this amazing, amazing place. <laughs> Do you know, it, was, it was a secret society. It, it, it's totally for, a secret society. For guitar for hangout know guys? know about it in, in the Bay Area. <laughs> oh. Fucking famous people would come in there and freak me out. Dude. Fat Dog knows everybody. I think he started working in the 60s. So he probably knows Jerry Garcia, I imagine. <laughs> or Pig Pan. <laughs> One of them. What are they called? He's got some very famous regulars at his shop. <clears throat> and he's got a Rolodex of some very famous people. Is Jerry Garcia in there? I bet he was. I never got to really look at Fat Dog's Rolodex. I think that was, you know, it, it did just sit out on the counter sometimes. I, I could have, but I didn't. I just go, what kind of famous people are in Fat Fogarty? Dog's Rolodex? Does he know Fogarty? Does Fat Dog ever met F John Fogarty? I'm <laughs> sure Fat Dog's met John Fogarty. Then that's cool enough. That's a good enough street cred for me. Mm -hmm. How about you people at home? <laughs> All, all I feel, I just keep going back and forth, and I just want to make sure I'm getting. He's filing his guitar away, ladies and gentlemen at home. <laughs> but please buy a Harmony, cheap Harmony from a where we uh, for ten dollars from an antique shop, and practice this first. Got a lot of practice doing this kind of stuff at Subway Guitar, but it's been more than, whew, I think 2005 is when I moved away. That was the last time I was doing this every day. So that's a long time ago. The sound of it is painful. It is, that's isn't it? You, don't, you were talking about that. Yeah, I don't like it. took our little break. I was doing the sigh. This is the sound of your guitar breaking. Yeah. <laughs> And this guitar was previously owned by uh, Tracy Guns. So we're, gonna, we're fixing it up for him. Lies, 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 John. Why yeah, lies? oh, this, this episode brought to you by Guns N' Roses. This episode brought to you by Lies. By their Lies, Lies, Lies album. Probably Izzy Stradlin had to, you know, have this. Do you think Izzy Stradlin can can do this? Do you think he has this skill, <laughs> Randy? No, I think he takes it to. He a guy takes it to this. Fat Dog, probably. No, I don't think he was one of Fat Dog's clients. Yeah, probably not. He probably tried it at home, and then got fired from Guns N' Roses because <laughs> his guitar was so messed up. You never know who's going to walk into that guitar shop, though. You never do. All kinds of fucking cool people came to Fat Dogs when I worked there. Tracy Guns never came in Tracy there? Tracy Guns never came in there. He probably works on his own Kramers. That's how he got his own model. One of Fat Dogs' friends is this guy you may have heard of called Taj Mahal. Oh. That New Orleans, that Zydeco man. He, he would come in occasionally. Oh. I bet his, yeah. Well, he, geez. I was there one time. That and says a lot about Fat Dog because uh, you know that Taj Mahal is famous for beating up guitars. Yes, Taj Mahal, uh, he knows everything. Oh, does he? He's the historian of the blues, the maestro. But he he's not afraid to hit his guitar hard. When he came into Subway Guitars, I would definitely just would not be working on guitars i would be like just glued to like what a head and fat dog going to talk about <laughs> taj mahal is the man yeah. 
One time Daryl Jones came in the shop. Daryl the Munch Jones. Tell the story. He was right there. He came in, he bought some guitars. Whoa. Yeah. Daryl Jones, man. Actually, like it was kind of funny because like aside from Fat Dog, I was the only guy in the shop that was excited. Nobody else cared, you know. But I like, saw him play with Miles, man. I, I made him the second I saw him, you know. Miles, who? Miles Davis. Oh. He played with Miles Davis. I saw him play with Miles Davis. Montreal Jazz Fest. 1980, god damn, I was a young man. I don't think I was of legal drinking age even yet. I think that was some early hitchhiking days. You ever go hitchhiking, Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> My name is Johnny Arkansas. You've done some hitchhiking. Yeah. Throw the old thumb out. Hope you don't get uh, picked up by a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I don't think I really cared about serial killers when I was doing it. Yeah. You I probably like, I need a ride, man. I don't know. You take your chances when you throw the thumb out, right? You're definitely taking some chances. <laughs> I'll take you as far as the next town. <laughs> and then you get serial killed. Then you get serial killed. <laughs> Getting fascinated by the pile of dirt I'm piling up here on this old sheet. I think we might have a special guest. A special guest? Yeah. Someone uh, phoning you? It's a like a race. Special guest like a race. Oh wow, he's famous. He can come over here and watch you file. We're gonna take a break from filing and no. take my coat off. Hey, are you sick. at Randy's house? Where are you at? At Randy's house? Is he out front? Okay, you got a buzz, the number 23. But can you buzz number 23? I can go up next Huh? You're at Randy's? Oh, uh, he's not here. <laughs> he's starting to come by and make an appearance, good old Leko. I don't know. I, I think Leko uh, just called me. All right. Bass players, man. What you gonna do about bass players? I don't know. He's just interrupting the episode. But you just keep filing. Well, you know, it's not much to really watch, I guess. You can get some more close-ups of the in-detail filing. I'm pretty close. You got it. You got a good view on what's going on here. What's that flat side? Yeah. It just is terrifying. It's just terrifying. You don't like that sound. It's just, that sound is bad. Yeah. It looks like surgery. I can make it work with this. Here we go. It's pretty surgery. It's very much surgery. This file is perfect size for doing this. It's the best tool I ever had for doing this.
got good and close on these ones. They don't need much. They're already pretty in there. Just gotta get this little round over. Is that Leco again? Hello? Oh no, I'm at Randy's house. You want to come? You have to go to 20. You have to go downtown. Yeah, cool. Come on down, man. We're going to have tacos. Come on down, Leko. I'm going to make some tacos. Randy said, come on down. We're going to have tacos. Yeah, some tacos. 23rd. 22nd. You call me when you get around the... Uh, 23rd. Um, 23rd and... Broadway. 23rd and Broadway. Alright, see you soon. Now the internet's gonna know where I live, John. Yep. Maybe they're gonna come and steal my Kramers. <laughs> well, the internet's gonna come steal my vintage Kramer. Horde. My horde of vintage Kramers. Uh, what do the, exactly do those uh, robbers look like? The Kramer uh, thieves? The jewel? vintage Kramer. The robbery. vintage Kramer uh, thieves? <laughs> what do they look like? Do they dress Indeed. in black? Are they ninjas and stuff? They sneak I in? I don't know what they look like. Are they looking for a certain thing, or do they just come in and smash the place like, uh, like... <laughs> you know, they're probably looking for the holy grail of Kramer collectors, of which I have one. I know what you're talking about. The Richie Sambora? It's not my Richie Sambora, but I got a Richie Sambora Kramer. <laughs> I also have a Paul Dean Kramer. Are you familiar with that guitar player, Paul Dean? I am. He played in this amazing, the awesome rock band from Canada called Loverboy. Yeah. I love Loverboy, man. Everybody's working for the weekend. Isn't yeah, that Loverboy? That's Loverboy, working for the weekend. That's what we're doing. We're working right? for the weekend. Working on guitars, man. For the, guitars for the weekend. Just like Loverboy. You take a piece of the heart. Isn't that them? Better start from the start. <laughs> wow, I didn't I didn't see that coming in this episode of Lover Boy reference. Lover Boy reference. What's the other song? There's another hit song. I like all of it. What's the other song? They had a hit? They had some hits, Lover Boy. Bad hits. They had a bunch of them, but what's the other one? Just working for the weekend and we're stuck, eh? <sighs> turn me loose. Oh, turn me loose. Turn me loose. Turn me loose. <laughs> I'm going to file it my way. Well, no way, no well, you changed the lyrics up there, Randy. I did. Just kind of feeling them all, making sure they're... Well, I can see in this episode you started to use your finger. I've been using of, my finger a lot, I think, the whole time. Thumb. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Remember in the first episode you were using your thumb as a guide, now you're using your finger. Now I'm using my finger. What is that doing for you exactly? I mean, you did. It, it doesn't matter which digit you do it with, but you're definitely doing something. I'm just kind of going over it. I'm feeling it, like I just anything that still feels sharp or sticking up or something. I'm trying to get rid of all the little sharpie bits.
kind of just sort of slide the file. See if it's sticking out or not. If I still got any of that sprouting metal. The dreaded fret sprout. Can I run my hand down it yeah, to yeah, see it, check out to see we, if my hand is sliced? Let's we'll see if you're slicing it. It's still there's going to be some little bits still sharp. Feels all right. Feel all right. Getting better. I'm just going to go back over it from this side now. It felt fine. It's getting there, isn't it? Probably some burrs sticking up this direction from me filing on the other direction. So I'm just very lightly going to go from this side and make them smooth as I sort of can. Oh, my angle's getting a little flat there. I gotta remind myself. shape it much. I just want to round that over a little bit. I'm going to come back in here, polish these some more with something a little bit more aggressive than the Miracle Cleaning Cloth. What are you going to do to it? I got some, some really fine kind of wet dry sandpaper. I'm going to use to polish this. Frets up a little bit more and when I'm doing that I'll take out the scratches I'm putting in now with this little file. Tip your local guitar fret man. See how much work they gotta do? Look at this. Look at this work they gotta do. The cost alone in masking tape. Fortune in masking tape. You get good at this on a rosewood fretboard and you're doing it every day in a shop. You don't use no masking tape. You don't need to. But you know, it's your own guitar and it's a vintage Kramer and you're paranoid. And yeah, you don't wanna fuck it up. I'm gonna protect it a little bit. That's not what I would do with a vintage Kramer. I'd wire that thing up and plug it in straight, turn it up, and pl I'd play it, uh, you know, run it till it breaks. Run it till it breaks, run it till it breaks. Ride it hard and put it up. I wet. did run it till it broke. It <laughs> broke. It, got, it, it, it did break. Like I, Ride I, I it ran hard this guitar. And put it up wet. I rode this guitar hard, I put it up wet, the result of which is now... Now, gonna, now the consequences. Now's the consequences. Now you gotta file it for several hours. How many hours have I been filing on it now? Um, hour and a half. Hour and a half. You've been, fi you've been filing on this thing? Which is pretty good, I think. It's not too bad, is it? No, I mean, that's a pretty... I, I would have thought it would take me longer, much longer it's to file it. not the end of the world. You, and, and we took a break. We took a break. 
I think it's good to take a break. This is pretty tedious work. I think if we're going to file, you should always take a break from filing once in a while. Indeed. How much masking tape do you think I'm going to use on this restoration? I don't know. Are you going to paint it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question. That's a loaded question indeed. Are you going to paint it up? Are you going to spray paint it make it look cool? Or are you going to keep it like whatever, the way it looks? It's going to look just the way it looks. I ain't going to paint it. Yeah, I'm dude. not gonna paint it. You should get some military stencils and, and uh, make it say Randy. Personalize the shit out of it. I would, you know. It just says Randy, all willy nilly on the, you know. That's what I would do if I customized it. Let's make it say Randy. Yeah, Yeah, dude. Filing, filing, filing. That's the only way it will be better than a snake with teeth. <laughs> That's the only way to beat him. That other guitar player. We can remember who that guy is. <laughs> I can't remember. I hope he doesn't see this video and get offended. Uh, I hope he sees one and donates it to you. I'm sure he's great. I just don't remember what his name is. Because we're not into guitar playing. We're into Kramers, man. We're just into Kramers? I'm yeah, into we don't care, you know? Yeah. Hey, if you have a if you have a Kramer, a signature Kramer, you're down with us. We don't have to even know your name or listen to your music. I'm just down with all signature Kramers. Yeah. <laughs> kind of collected signature model Kramers. Who's the worst? Uh, who's the worst player that uh, Kramer ever endorsed? Oh, who's the worst? player? Yeah, the worst. Because they, they, they endorse the best, but who's the worst? Well, who would you say, you know? It's like the NFL, where you make, or the NHL, whatever, where you make bad decisions in draft. Who would you say? <laughs> well, I think one of the things that ruined the company was they backed this band called Gorky Park. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Russian metal band. Bang! Russian metal da, band. Da, da, da. I know them. Yeah. What? They made like these Kramer Floyd Rose guitars that are like fully shaped like Bella Laikas. Yes. Actually, if I could get one of those for the right price, I'm getting it. And I think you're wrong about Gorky Park. I think that. Uh, they're a really good uh, band. Yeah, they're probably... I'm, I'm a fan. I bet you they're great musicians. I'm a fan of theirs. I think they make good songs. I don't think I really listen. I can't name a Gorky Park song. Can you name a Gorky yes, Park song? Bang. Bang. Da, 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 da. Bang. Because I don't, I don't know on that, you know, that their English is also perfect. I, I don't know. I don't want to judge Gorky Park. I, I like their music. Wow. See, that's what happens. You know, you start filing away. You start having conversations you know, about Russian metal. <laughs> Russian metal. Are they metal or are they Russian like a hair band? Like a Russian hair band? Was anybody that played for Kramer Guitar Endorsement today's metal? Or were they all hair bands? That's a tough question. Was Eddie Van Halen metal? Nuclear Assault, don't they play Kramer? I, I have no idea. I'm unaware of a Nuclear Assault Pro model. What, right. Uh, well, let's see. Tracy Guns, buddy.
Do you think the Tesla guys, do you think they played Kramers? What kind of guitars did they play? I have no idea. I should. I've seen them even. I can't remember what that guy plays. How about Vixen? Did they play Kramers? <laughs> did they play Kramers? How about Dangerous Toys? Do you know who played a Kramer guitar? Is Sam Kennison. The comedian. He was sampled by uh, Anthrax on I'm the Man, right? Sam Kennison? Yeah. Alrighty. I think that's going to be the end of this episode. Let's take a look at it. Gonna take some close looks at that. Probably a couple of spots. You can see where my file's hitting. Mm -hmm. Little woods moved away a little bit. There's a good little gouge from my little file. Right that little edge bit. But yeah. My first fret needs a little extra. For Jakey e. Lee. I don't know why I keep talking about him because I, I, you know, I think he's the next on my list. This fret is. Did important. he ever play Kramer? Jakey e. Lee? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Did Vi? No, I think Vi was Ibanez almost immediately. All the time, I, Ibanez? We'll have to do an episode where we fix up an Ibanez. Sure one will come up. <laughs> we gotta have a friend with a busted up Ibanez. Oh. <laughs> I used to jam with an Ibanez guy, man, but then I, I can't get in touch with him no more. I don't want to jam with you no more? I don't know. We just lost touch. You know? I kind of want to be doing that. Just, just making sure that I don't have any sprout left. I'm kind of using the file just to feel if it is catching on anything. It's like you're making a knife, but not a, knife, a dull knife. I'm dulling some stuff out. Feeling pretty good. That's all feeling pretty good. That one doesn't feel good. Feeling good, feeling good, feeling good. Feeling good, feeling good, feeling good. Starting to like it. That doesn't feel good. Don't want to rip your gigging shirt. Would you say that would be like a rule of thumb? If you're filing down your fret? Is it going to rip my shirt? Is it going to rip my gigging shirt? My good gigging shirt? Is it going to rip my good gigging shirt? Then, then you call it a what? A, a what do you call it? Hmm? What do you call it when it's a little too high? Fret sprout. Fret sprout. God. It's just so funny to say. <laughs> I said it to Jill the other day from the earlier video on this. Fret sprout. And like, she, she totally... Said it so funny. They should, what? What? Sprout fruit? What? <laughs> Sprout fruit. Fret sprout. Getting rid of my fret sprout. Yeah, nobody wants the fret sprout. I'm sorry. I don't want this vintage Kramer. 
It has too many fret sprouts. It's no fun to play with that. If they're yeah, sharp, it, they're, it they're not be, fun. Would, no, and it would. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, you, it would you, cut up your. You play some shirt. guitar. Cut your gigging shirt. If it's bad enough, it'll cut your hand. Go off for a tetanus shot. I guess if you got good at guitar. But if you're shitty, uh, you don't really get up there anyway. <laughs> Need to get a little bit more serious, just this area here. I saw some damage up high on there, Randy. Someone's been playing that guitar up high on the neck. Would you say, Randy, there's two ways to break guitars? Either by playing them or by not playing them. Yeah, I think you're right about that. <laughs> that seems to be the deal. You play them, they get busted up. You don't play them, they get busted they up. They get busted up. Would you say? Yeah. I don't think you can really win. I think there's just. It's like if you own a car, you always got to do car exactly. maintenance. Exactly, got to pay the insurance on if it. You own a dishwasher, you yeah, got to fix know? the dishwasher. If you own a guitar, you got to fix the guitar. And there's two ways to do it, right? You call the Maytag man, or you got to do it yourself, right? You got well, yeah. Two, you got two options. And these days, you can go on online and watch someone fix it. Kind of what's giving me the balls to do that is watching other guys do this online. Like, I know how to do that. I should be doing that. It's not that hard. Well, it's definitely been a journey for me filming with you. And it's, the it's Randy a journey show. on the Randy Steffes show. I'm gonna start filming it a little bit more weird, like more like an, uh, like maybe next episode I should like think o overthink it, definitely, and make it like a like a case files, you know, <laughs> FBI case files. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be good. You know, put a little more razzle dazzle on it. A little more razzle dazzle. Nope, you like everything to be a wood shop. This bit's tricky. This bit's tricky. The fret's probably ain't gonna be that much of an issue here on base side. Last fret, but what if I want to play that note? It's like the fretboard kind of curves away from the slot, so it's making it just a little tricky. Just didn't get enough of that big file on this one. I don't like that sound, Ray. It's an awful sound, isn't it? <laughs> awful, awful sound. Awful, awful sound. Alright. Shook, 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 shook. Shook, All right. I'm 
pretty happy with that. So next time I'll on the Randy Steffer show when we continue to restore the uh, the Kramer, I'm gonna do some more fret polishing. And do 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 do.